You're listening to the First Fight Podcast, home of the people and stories behind the fight. I'm Jennifer Anderson, the host and creator. My goal is to give you a peek into the remarkable world of fighting and create a platform for fighters to tell their stories. In each episode of this series, a different fighter shares a transformative story of their first time. Welcome back, everyone. On today's episode, I talk with Laura Sanchez. Laura and I actually started out at the same gym in Milwaukee, and she is a new face in the women's PFL lightweight tournament. She'll be fighting this Friday for her second fight in the organization. Laura and I talk about how her experience in sports and basketball translate to her competing in martial arts and MMA, and we talk about her first fight as well and what mental obstacles she overcomes to compete. Today I have on a friend, Laura Sanchez. Now Laura is in the PFL's tournament. Actually, you'll be fighting this Friday, mm-hmm. in the second round of the tournament, right? And um, I used to train with Laura. I met back in Milwaukee at Rufus Sport. And Laura actually used to be a basketball player. Yep. Right. I'm sure people bring that up a lot, but, um, yeah, super tall and I'm sure it was difficult to find fights for a while, but I'm happy to see that you got the opportunity to be in this tournament. Thanks. Yeah, it was all my fights were like a year apart as an amateur. They all took forever, except a couple of them were a little bit closer. Yeah. But that took forever. It's hard on the amateur scene to, um, I think it fights in your weight class. Um, Yeah, for sure. Because I fight, obviously, 55. And then, um, like, I kept having fights that girls were taking. And then they were falling through last minute. And I was constantly getting ready for them. But it was just really annoying. Because I feel like maybe at the amateur level, a lot of girls just like to call themselves fighters. And then, you know, don't take them. Uh, And I know one girl rejected one with me and then took a different one right off right away so I don't know that it was really frustrating to go through that whole process yeah well it sounds like you got some good experience though which is cool like I noticed a lot of girls out here will only fight like a couple amateur fights and they go pro right away it's like worse out here surprisingly people have a harder time finding fights but um I'm glad you're able to get that experience in me too Um, but what brought you to the gym to get started? Uh, well, when I was playing basketball between my junior and senior year in college, I came home for like one month um, and I needed to keep working out. And at that time, Rufus Sport was across the street from where it is now. And they had a fitness class that you remember Callie, Callie was running it and it was called Kick Fit. And I'd always wanted to be in um, some sort of martial arts, some sort of combat sport since I was little, like even before I started playing ball, but my parents couldn't afford it. So basketball was more affordable, which is why I went that that route. And I still loved it, but I decided, I'm like, well, I want to do a different workout. And I saw, you know, there was kick fit. It's like, this is going to be great. Just throw something different at my body than, you know, the standard basketball workouts which by the way when I went back to school my senior year I passed my conditioning test the very first try which I never did before and I you know give that credit to Rufus Sport um so I went there for that kick fit class went back to school played ball went as far as I could with that and then when I came home you know the door just closed on basketball and I was like you know I, I I'm not content working a nine to five. It's just not for me in respect to a lot of the people who can, but I was like feeling like depressed, like, what am I going to do? And I was like, I need to do something. And I want to do something that I've always wanted to. So I tried to find the best gym in Milwaukee for, I just looked up boxing right off the bat. That was going to be the first thing I looked up. I was going to search other martial arts. That just happened to be the first one. And Rufus Sport popped up and I looked it up and I was like, okay, mixed martial arts. So let me see what they're, what's going on there. So I went back and I was like, oh, this is the place I'd already been. So um, 
I remembered Callie and a couple other people that I saw started taking classes and fell in love. That's amazing. Now, when did you have your first fight? It was after I had left, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't even remember if it's 2013 or 2015. It was, it just feels like it was a long time ago. I'm guessing. Yeah. Was that, was that after you left? Yeah. I think I started in 2012. Mm -hmm. I probably left in like 15. Okay. Like, yeah, the end of 15, I'm thinking. Okay. So, yeah, I fought, it was, um, it was right there in Milwaukee. And it was at, I think it was the theater, the Milwaukee Theater, I believe. And I already had like five fights fall through. And I was like so annoyed because I just couldn't get one right. Mm -hmm. Then a girl fell through. My opponent withdrew like six days out or so. And luckily the promoter found a replacement. And the fight was supposed to be at 55. I was already really close to 55. And then we got closer and she'd asked, oh, can we do 160 for a catch weight? Promoter calls me, says she wants to do 160. I said, sure. I didn't care. I just wanted yeah. to fight by that point. And then I weigh in, I'm about, I'm 160. And I'd actually gotten lower than that before we weighed in. And then she came after everybody left. Uh, she was like taking a test or something and was late to the weigh-ins. And then he calls me later and he goes, you're not going to believe this. And I said, what's going on? And he said, she came in at 175. And I was like, <laughs> what the heck? Like, did she even try to cut weight? He goes, it doesn't seem like it. And he was like, so basically, long story short, I said, I still want this fight. Just just give me this fight and, we'll, and just, just make it happen and I'll be there. So we made it happen. I got there. The girl, I can't even, I don't know if she was 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, but her whole um, strategy was just to throw haymakers, try to get me against the fence, and I think she wanted to, to take me down. Um, so I remember Kush, we talked about him before this, and he was so relaxed because, you know, it's your first fight. The nerves are going. You don't know what to expect. You're trying to relax. You're just like, oh, my God. I'm actually about to do this. And he just goes, just play Matador. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he was like, seriously, she's just going to try to throw everything behind her punches. She's going to wind up and she's going to run in. Just step out of the way. Don't even try to hit her. Make her, one, she miss and waste energy. And two, mentally, she's going to say, oh, I did all that and I couldn't catch her. Mm -hmm. He was like, just do that and relax and have fun that's it. I was like, okay. So I went out there and she did exactly that. She was throwing everything she could. I threw a couple leg kicks and, you know, it'd be my first fight. She caught the leg kick and rushed me against the fence. She tried to beat up my body. And I was like, oh, that's how this feels. Like it was really just the experience to see, oh, I can take these hits mm -hmm. or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like at least from her. So I was like, you, I think that their main strategy, at least as the coaches are just, you know, are they really cut out for this? Because some people can practice amazing and then step into the cage and be like a deer caught in the headlights, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I think that's really what it is. Just get in there and see if you're, if you can make it, if you're ready, to, if you're actually a fighter. So I just remember it went all three rounds. Um, and I kind of just, I stuck and moved. But to be honest, it took me a while to remember the, some of the stuff that happened after the fight because I feel like I like blacked out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like you look back and you're like, what just happened? That went. I was really surprised when it was done. I mean, it was a nine minute fight, right? Yeah. So I just remember it was the end of the third round. I felt like I was still ready to go. Kush comes in and he goes, it's over. You won. And I was like, it's over already? And he was like, yeah, three, three minute rounds. And I was like, <laughs> the hell like I was like I can't <laughs> believe it's already done right yeah. and so I mean that's good yeah I mean I was surprised that the adrenaline didn't like you know kill me and I didn't have an adrenaline dump afterwards and afterwards I was I had my, my family members there so my cousins and we all went to go get like margaritas and fajitas afterwards that's amazing that 
you felt that way, like for your first time, it, I had a huge adrenaline dump, definitely. Yeah. But, so that's good. It's like a good sign that like you're comfortable performing like that. Yeah. It. What's funny is that that was my very first one. But then when I had a couple of fights after that, I had the adrenaline dumps. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it was weird because when I think about it, I feel like that should have hit me in my first fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I feel like as you go, like, you start off being super reactive. And then as you yeah. get more experienced, every fight is more like you have a little bit more time to think, you know, in the beginning. Yeah, you, you learn how to relax more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So after that first fight, did you know you wanted to continue doing it for sure? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think I went back to the gym right after that, like that Monday, I think. But then that also taught me um, after that fight, I was like, no, you need to give your body a couple of days to, to yeah. recuperate. Because I... So we're talking about the adrenaline dump, right? So I didn't feel it. Like I didn't feel sick and I didn't feel like exhausted. Like I just needed to pass out, but I had every single muscle in my body. Like even like muscle, I felt like the muscles between my knuckles were tight. Like everything that I didn't know existed was Mm -hmm. tight. And I went and got a massage after that. And I was like, I really need this to get, I need some help. (laughs) Well, it's a stressful event on your body in mind, yeah. you know, whether or not mm-hmm. it felt that way, like once it's mm-hmm. over and if you cut weight, especially it's, you need a little time to recover for sure. Yeah. Um, so you had a bunch of amateur fights and mm-hmm. you went pro. How does your family feel about you competing in MMA? They weren't happy about it. I really want to think about that. I just think about how my parents reacted. So they're not, like, happy that I fight. I mean, Mm -hmm. my dad's concern since I was little and I said I wanted to do it was brain damage, of course. Yeah. And obviously, like I said, they also couldn't afford it before. So it could have been, you know, a mixture of those different reasons as to why I didn't, they didn't put me in it. Um, But basically they were just like you know fighting isn't something you can half-ass you're either all all in or you're not yeah well I had already known that you know it's you can't play it you can't play fight and you can't just you know just dip the toes in you're either all in or you're not you have to be completely committed you're putting your life you're really putting your life on the line because you know it's your health yeah. you're putting your brain you're destroying brain cells you're trying you know you still want to be able to have a longer career so you got to be smart about it and you got to work your ass off for it mm-hmm. so I mean I kind of also learned about how dedicated you have to be when I was playing ball so you know I would eat drink and sleep my sport mm-hmm. so then I learned about discipline and commitment and besides the physical like athletic athletic things like the footwork and all that I I I, I trained to be athletic I wasn't born that way. You know, a lot of those things transfer over to MMA. So Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about what I needed to do from basketball. Yeah. At what point did you decide that you wanted to pursue this like as a career? Um, I think I was just all in right from the beginning, to be honest. Like, I don't, I didn't want to just do MMA just to you know do it as a hobby like I feel like I'm a competitor I've always been a competitor Mm -hmm. so when I did that I was like yeah I want to test myself I still want that challenge I still want to you know push my mind to the limits my body to the limits like I always did Mm -hmm. so I think that was just I didn't even have a second thought about that and then you went to Singapore and got the opportunity to to do it was like a tournament format Mm -hmm. as well right yeah so it was against um the two I I fought two girls there were supposed to be two more in the bracket but they didn't make the weight um but the two girls that I fought were from Ukraine and the other one was from France Mm -hmm. um so they were both in the same day all the guys fought the first day 
and then the women fought the second day along with some of the guys um and then all three women for the u.s uh got a medal yeah. um, and then now you're in the pfl tournament mm-hmm. on your second fight how's the experience been for you so far it's been good um i didn't really know what to expect you know i all of my experience before was just you know the lower um regional scenes amateur um being here i get to see how the top promotions work at least you know with the pfl and their their biggest thing is being about their fighters so i can't really like compare it to anything else Mm -hmm. um but i really like how they treat their fighters um they make sure we're all well taken care of um and i like the format the format like the tournament it's unique no no one else does this and the thing that I like about it is, you know, just the quick turnaround, they keep you busy. And then you have an off season where you can kind of relax and enjoy and recuperate. It's just like when I play ball that during the season and there's an off season. Yeah, I think the PFL, the way they're doing it is, I think, probably appealing to a lot of fans that might not be in the fighting because it has that familiar format. Yeah, and yeah really good production too um i think they're doing a good job so far especially this season everything looked really clean in their production and yeah um how do you feel about your next opponent um i'm excited you know it's i know what she's gonna do i mean she's much smaller than me she's got to come into me um and i'm kind of used to a lot of um other women having to make up for that um, yeah that reach advantage that I have. So their disadvantage. Um, so I'm pretty sure she'll just be trying to get in on me, probably get me against the fence and try to take me down. Um, so it, it's nothing that I haven't seen before, but not to say anything about her. Cause I mean, you know, she's her, she's her own self. So every fighter is not the same. Yeah. Um, so don't, you know, take it that way. Um, So she's definitely a threat. Obviously, she won her last fight on the ground against the girl who seemed to have pretty decent boxing. Um, So, you know, I'm excited for it. I just, I'm happy for the quick turnaround. I, you know, I want to get back in there and get going again. Yeah. What do you find to be like your biggest challenge as a, like mentally as a fighter? Um, I think just, trying not to be perfect because that's pretty much what I've been focusing on between this last fight and this one. Mm -hmm. Um, My last fight, I faced someone who was completely different than any other person I faced. And my, not to say that like I've had a lot of experience, right. If you really think about it, I'm so new to this and I'm a, I'm a baby in martial arts and I know it. So I, like I said, I still have so much to learn, but the things that I learned is that, you know, Jenna was, tall like me and she was a lefty and that was different everyone else has been shorter and had a completely different strategy so when I went in honestly Kush couldn't have had me any better prepared for that fight we focused a lot on some of the same techniques and drilled them a lot and then when I went in there I tried to be perfect and that's an issue that I have because I'm a perfectionist to a fault you know, and you just feel like, oh, it's got to be like this. It's got to be like this. No, it's just fighting. We like, we work on that. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just, really just, just hit her. Understand. Like, when in doubt, just hit the person. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've heard that quote. Yeah, yeah. When in doubt, hit him in the when face. Not- like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time he said that to me, and I was just like, oh. Okay, he goes, seriously, we work all the technique like this so that when you're in the fight, it just comes out. Just do you. Yeah. So between the last fight and this one, it's just been about that. It's just been about me being comfortable, just letting my hands go. I have really good striking, and I know it. Like, yeah. So when I get in there, it's just just let it go. Yeah. I know I'm powerful, and I know I'm fast. I think Jenna, in your last fight, you know, it was tough, you know, probably a mm-hmm. jump up in competition. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I think you like neutralized her, but like at the end you turned it up and I was like, oh, so yeah. Good. 
like I said, I just, I really, and I'm not stuck on this, on this. So let me just say that. It's just that when I rewatch it, I just know that I could have, and I should have beaten her. And it's not to take anything away from her, but it's the simple fact that I didn't let my hands go. And I didn't, I just didn't do me. And the couple of times where I let something go, it was all good. Yeah. You know, like, like, and like I said, she, she either backed away or she would clinch me. So I really just could have just kept flowing. You know what I mean? Like I looked at it and I'm like, why didn't I do that more? Mm-hmm. Like, why did I try to think, oh, I, I, I got to do this or I got to do that? Like, no, just hit him. Right. So when she, the fact that she clinched me the whole time, I was just, I was kind of annoyed of it. Cause I'm like, man, just fucking stand and strike with me. Like I would rather have her stand and just try to hit at me than just hold me against the fence. But again, you know, that's part of the fight. Clinching is part of it. So it's not to complain. It's just something that I still have to get through and get better at. Um, but I know a couple of things I learned about myself too, is like I said, knowing that I could and should beat someone, right? Mm-hmm. You still have to believe that you're out there. You put in all this work and just let it go Two, She's supposed to be, I think like one of the most powerful strikers in this tournament. And she hit me flush with her left hand a, a couple of times. And I was like, I didn't even notice Yeah. again, not to trash her, but it's, it's something good for me to know that you know not that I want to take hits but I can take them and keep moving forward but when I move forward I just got to do something you know um so just in the future if I could ever get I would hope to get a fight back with her just for myself not for not to prove anything to anyone or you know what I mean like people like do you like would you want to prove that no it's not about that it's about me and it's about the threat that the opponents present to me so I just I would like to face her again so I can overcome her style in that matchup yeah and I think you'd be able to hopefully yeah totally I get so too. literally after every fight I fought I thought I want to do it again right now <laughs> like, yeah because then you're like oh I didn't do this like, and I should have done this maybe I, I could have ended this sooner it, you know and <laughs> I realized, like, I should be more tired right now. I'm not, like... Yeah. We, I had problems with performing, you know, and not being... Yeah. And after the fight, I'm like, well, fuck. Like, <laughs> I can beat her. Like, you know, I I would... A tournament, actually, I would like to do. Or yeah. what she would have done. Yeah. But... um I don't know, but I like that format that you're doing. I she's tough, and mm-hmm. I thought you did really good considering, like, like you said, you are really green still. Like, yeah. like you don't look green, but <laughs> years wise, you know, some of yeah. these, some people have been training for a really really long time or, or competing a lot more, like in Muay Thai or whatever. So. Yeah. It was impressive. I'm. I hope you go into this next fight like knowing that like you belong and yeah, you will do really well. I'm. I'm excited about it. Me too. I mean, some of my teammates, um, when they saw me, were just like, "Just you just have to let your hands go. You just yeah. have to believe in yourself." Like some of them were like, "We all know you belong there." You just have to freaking just go in and be yourself, you know, stop thinking so much. That's what everybody, that's what people keep telling me. Stop thinking so much. You know, so that's my thing. Like I said, I'm a perfectionist. So, you know, when I work, like I've had a lot of one-on-one time with Kush. So we've done like pad work like twice a day and he's just really got me flowing and not, not thinking as much, just working on that. And, you know, we're, we're flowing really good now. Good. I mean, it, Fighting is all about balance, right? It's like a balance between confidence and awareness and a balance between being aggressive and... Yeah. But not... You still have to be relaxed. That's the thing. And being relaxed, you know, all Mm -hmm. those things are... You got to, like, fine-tune over time and... Yeah. 
like it's it's hard the balance for me is hard to relax your mind and not let your body relax with it you know what I mean like because you want your mind to be relaxed and be patient and not rush things and not freak out right because when you freak out then your body follows but you want to relax and still have your body sharp and quick and on its p's and q's that for me is a balance that um I think I'm really just I'm I'm working on a lot yeah I I I can empathize a lot with that I I see a lot of like myself in you like the way you approach it and think about it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and I don't know if it's the same for you but like I had to really because fighting made me really nervous so I had to like over compensate by like making myself relax so much that like I didn't always have like a it didn't look like I had like a sense of urgency even though I did in my head (laughs) I was Uh really hard to like be calm and think about what I'm doing. Uh-huh. My last fight, actually, I am the most disappointed in because um, I felt too calm. Where I, it was like yeah. watching things happen, and I yeah. need that like fire under my ass and it just yeah. calm. People don't get that though. You know, it's like that's what's so frustrating is because you're in there, and it's all about you. Everyone is different. You can't fake anything when you're in the cage mm-hmm. and what you just explained was how I was in my last fight if you because when I rewatched it I was like why am I plotting I don't move like that you know I'm like this is I looked tired but I wasn't and I had so much energy yeah even afterwards like and I remember the commentators were like people don't understand how grueling this type of fight is for the clinch And I was just like, what's so crazy is, like I said, I still had energy. I just couldn't go. And I was making, I tried to make my mind so relaxed that my body was relaxed and I was plotting. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what you're talking about. And that's what happened with me. Um, You know, but like I said, just, just working on and just maturing. I, I still have a lot to work on and to learn. Oh, there's so much like MMA, you don't really... I've talked about this before it's not like muay thai where people fight or boxing like they fight mm-hmm. in mma you really don't get a, a big window to you know be successful you, you got to kind of figure it out quick and some people yeah more fights to figure out certain things you know and yeah it's just making those adjustments it's it's a marathon more than a sprint but i think yeah and like a sprint there's so much to learn. I don't think you can learn everything, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. You, you like, at least with like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but if you think about like a certain discipline, like boxing, where it's just boxing, there's a lot for you to learn, but I don't think that it's like endless where, or at least like in MMA, I have to learn certain things about striking. I have to learn certain things about, you know, when we're clinching. And then when we're wrestling and then when we're on the ground, if it's like judo, judo or jujitsu or certain submissions, because there's so much to learn. Like I, I, I believe there's so many martial arts around the world that we don't even know exist. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many different ways of combat and, oh, and just the transition. You'll never learn them. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. gotta, you have to figure out what works for you and you only have so much time because our bodies can only do this for so long. Mm-hmm yeah it's crazy in in the sport itself is like still developing so like even in our experience doing it I feel like the strength and conditioning has changed a lot you know like people are learning how to approach that like people don't even know what to do with MMA athletes (laughs) so it's changing a lot and like even in the tournament, you'll see like some of the women are like the old school. They've been around for a while, and then yep. some, like totally new to it. There, there's sometimes a really big gap in experience in women's MMA too. But I think yeah, for sure this generation that started, you know, a little younger than you, yeah, that started training MMA from the get, you know, which yeah 
it really wasn't like that. Yeah, and I look at some of these kids who take start taking classes at Rufus Sport when they're so young, and there's they're learning jujitsu and kickboxing. They're learning mixed martial arts, and I'm like, what an advantage to to have that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I always like felt like I started too late, and that held me back a lot. Um, yeah. Think about some of these kids. It's crazy. Like. Yeah. The advantage. And at that age they're learning like the showtime kick and stuff already and I'm like these kids are going to be beasts <laughs> oh my god yeah well I'm excited for you I, I've been trying to get more women on the, the podcast to hear their experience too um and you just coming from the same place I did it's nice hearing from you and your experience in it so I appreciate you well, thanks for having me on. Especially with a fight coming. So, yeah. thank you for ESPN Plus, um, the next round of the tournament. And yep. it's going to be awesome. Thanks again, Laura, for coming on and chatting with me. You can watch Laura on ESPN Plus this Friday in the PFL tournament. I'm looking forward to it and seeing her compete again. And you can follow us on at the first fight and check out the website firstfightpodcast.com we have another exciting episode coming next week so stay tuned